Good morning and welcome to the Student Hub Live. My name is Karen Foley, um, I'm a lecturer and a tutor here at the Open University and uh, I'm going to be your host for this morning's first boot camp to welcome new students to the Open University. Now, I see that some of you have been filling in these widgets or interactive tools and, and that a lot of you haven't been to these events before, which is brilliant, so welcome. Let me tell you how it all works. So, this is a space for our academic community and um, we, we do this because it's sort of been widely agreed that students who feel part of a community and who go through a really good induction process are much more likely to succeed in their studies. So, well done, you're already on the right track. So I've invited some guests from across the Open University and we've thought about some of the things that we think new students really need to know about. So we're going to be covering like who's who in the OU, we're talking about getting your computer set up for studies, the VLE, the virtual learning environment, which you're going to become incredibly familiar with in your studies, um, online tutorials and how they all work, and also your tutor. So that's all in our first boot camp. Now we've prepared some stuff that we think is really important, but the most important thing is you at home chatting. Now I can see a lot of you are in the chat box and you've been all introducing yourselves. And if you haven't already, tell us who you are, what module you're studying, and you might want to let us know how you're feeling today. Um, and that'd be great because what makes these events really, really special is your sort of contributions in the chat. So talking to each other, letting us know what you think, letting us know if you disagree with our panellists or agree with them, um, and also sharing your study tips and time management tips, which we know OU students are experts at doing. Now, how is this all fed in? Well, HJ is on our hot desk today and we've got a few other colleagues from the Open University, so they'll be collating and feeding in all your responses. So let me introduce you to him. HJ, how are you? I'm OK. I'm really excited. We've got lots of great chat. I've got Lucy in the chat helping me out as well, which is fantastic. And yeah, it's great to see everyone. Everyone seems to be doing well. A lot of people just starting or coming back again. Uh, Brian was just having a good chat about he finds tutorials very necessary. I like tutorials as well. They are my favourite things. Um, but we've got people doing nursing, history, politics, psychology. Uh, Joel's looking forward to being an OU student. And uh, Danielle can't bear the wait until the course starts. So hopefully we'll get all geared up for our courses. So any thoughts, comments or questions you have for our guests? I love to put them to our guests. We have fantastic guests and they always love to hear from you. Um, one thing I do find, there's lots of people in the chat. So there's a little pin to the top right, which means that you can scroll through manually and it doesn't just keep going down so you have a chance to catch up. So I always recommend doing that. So put anything you want in the chat, anything goes. And you can also connect with us on Twitter, which is always good, at Student Hub Live, where we'll be posting lots of different things and you can uh, let us know what you're thinking as well. Oh, thanks, HJ. Um, so, brilliant. Introduce each other uh, in the chat and uh, also tell us uh, where you are and how you're feeling and what level you're studying and which subject you're studying um, and how you feel about starting your module in the next month and whether or not you've attended a Student Hub Live event before. Now, some of you have already been doing this and these are our widgets, our interactive tools, and they'll be displayed on your screen. What you do is you select the widget that you'd like to vote on and then just press the sort of option that applies to you um, and then close it and your answer will submit. When there's a box with like three things on it, that's a word cloud, um, which come together into a beautiful plethora of words. Um, and what you do is you need to put three things in there. So if you can only think of one or two things about how you feel about starting your next module, just put those in and put a full stop um, in the end so that your results will submit. OK, I think that's a lot of admin over and done with, so um, hopefully you've figured out how it all works. Oh, one last thing actually I should tell you is that um, you can change the interface layout of your screen. So there's a little box on the bottom right hand side. You can make the chat or the video bigger or smaller. And if you're having trouble with any of this, there's another way to access the Student Hub Live, which is through the live stream only link. And you can find that link on the Frequently Asked Questions section of the website. So uh, do that if you're having any problems. Right, so our first session, who's who and what's what? Well, I'm joined by Zach Eaton. Zach, thanks for coming Hello. along. Good Hello. Morning. How thank are you? you? I'm very well, thank you. Good, Good to be here. Yes, now you're in our student support team. Yep. And I figured that you were the best person to tell all our new students who's who and what's what. Because we've got a lot of new students out here, Zach. But there are some students who may be studying who also may not know of certain things that are available to them. So I wanted to run through some of the things yep. um, that we wanted to cover. Now, you're a senior advisor and you're in the student support team. Yep. So, so sort of tell us then, how does it all work in terms of what happens when students want to get in touch with the OU, often by phone or email or, or whatever? How does it all work? So 
There's a number of ways they can get in contact. Um, they can go through to our advisors in student recruitment um, by phone. They can submit a query uh, through their student homepage if there's something specific that they want to find out. And it will be, uh, those requests will get triaged through to us and, and the, the relevant team. And usually um, in, the, in the senior advisor's role, so my role, we like to you know, give our students a ring. But if there's something quite simple, we can, we can just respond by email. Um, and just quickly kind of answer their query and find them a solution. Brilliant. Now there's a number of people within the student support team, aren't there, who do a range of things for students. How do you sort of triage those calls and requests and things so that it goes to the right person who can help students and what sorts of things do you tend to get coming in? So <clears throat> the, the way that the student support team works is we kind of work to the information advice and guidance framework. Um, so if, if it's something to do with uh, kind of getting some specific information, our advisors and student recruitment will be able to find out where that information is. If um, a student is having issues, maybe understanding and making a decision, it will then go through to the senior advisors who can make sure that they're making informed decisions and know exactly what they need to do. And if there's more kind of guidance related issues, then our, then our colleagues, our educational advisors, will deal with that query and, and, and help their students along um, with a bit more kind of personal conversations. Now you're within the um, Open University Law School and Open University Business School and each sort of area of the university has its own level of advisors who have subject specific knowledge, isn't that right? Yep, exactly. So uh, I myself am a senior advisor who specialises in, in law and in the curriculum and, and the, the kind of nitty gritty bits of, of, of studying towards law and uh, I mean the Faculty of Business and Law is broken down into postgraduate and undergraduate business as well. Um, so everyone has their own kind of niche that they uh, that they kind of specialise in and that goes throughout all of the faculties in the, in the Open University. So what sort of things like do students phone you guys about then? Well it can range from anything really from if there's issues while they're studying um, trying to organise booking tutorials possibly, extra exam arrangements, um, the list is endless and anything really that a student can't find out from their tutor they can always come through to their student support team to ask. So you're almost like the first line of support for pretty much anything. Exactly. And then when does the tutor sort of come into it in terms of things and we've got a session a bit later about how to get the most out of your tutor but so students often say oh, I'm really worried about calling the wrong person. Mm. Who, who is the wrong person and who is the right person? I suppose really there's, there's not really a wrong or right person. I think when you're studying on your module, um, anything that is module specific, your tutor should be your first point of call because they're going to know, they're not just there you know, to, to mark your assessments, they're there to guide you through your studies, you know, give you individual support, uh, looking at face-to-face -face tutorials. So building up a rapport with your tutor is definitely important. Yeah. If there's anything else uh, that you're not sure of, then you can always always come through to the student support team and we'll be able to either direct you in the right place or, or, or get you the kind of advice, information or, or guidance that you need. Okay, well let's see how everyone's feeling right now because we, we asked you um, to fill in our word cloud um, with how you're feeling right now and I'd really like to see what sort of mood everyone is in on this Monday morning. Well, there are lots and lots of really positive words here, which is brilliant to see. Um, although some people are feeling tired and scared and needing coffee and quite tired and nervous. Um, counting down, prepared and patient, shy, anxious, eager, apprehensive, sleepy, excited is I think one of the biggest things. Um, a whole range of like emotions here, Zach. And I'd say this is really, really common when you're starting the module because there's this whole thing of not quite knowing what to expect um, but feeling really excited about the future. What sort of things do you think new students are going through right now? Maybe even continuing students who are about to embark on a new module, perhaps with new sort of forms of assessment. Mm. I mean, I can, I can, you know, definitely relate to being nervous and, and, and anxious about taking on, you know, study, uh, regardless of how much kind of credit it is or, or, or what it is that you're studying. It's an exciting time. Um, I think the best thing to remember is just to remain calm. Um, you've got people there to support you. Look at the module websites. Uh, October starters uh, are open now, so make sure you're, you're looking at the, the websites. Get involved with the forums, start speaking to people and just really relax into it. You know, don't, don't think too hard about um, <laughs> about kind of getting anything wrong because we are on hand to help them out. And HJ, how are people feeling in terms of, um, there were some people saying they felt shy or nervous, is the chat going nicely? It's going really nicely. I think uh, 
Vincent just said, I think the SST are great and they can put your ease at lost, which is really great to hear. And lots of people are chatting. People, uh, We've got Trisha from the Netherlands as well. So international viewers, we're getting up there. And Debbie from Cardiff. So nice to see a fellow pe person from Wales there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, per perhaps uh, we can get some help uh, from Zach with a couple of questions. Brilliant. Uh, we would like to know what's the difference between the TMA and ICMA? So a TMA is uh, usually uh, an essay um, and it's a, it's a written piece of work um, that you kind of submit to your tutor, whereas an ICMA is a computer marked assessment and it usually consists of multi-choice questions uh, which you do on an online form and you kind of can, can go there and it will automatically submit uh, the, the, the assessment that way. Great. And if we email you guys, mm -hmm. how long does it generally take for you to get back to us? So depending on the complexity of, of the query, we like to get back to everybody within two days. Now, not all the time we can find the solution in two days if it's something quite complex. We might need some specialist help from other departments and other members of staff. But we will get back in contact with you to update you and, uh, and ring you back if we, if we need any further information from you. And is there anything you would recommend if something comes up? So if there's an emergency that's in, interrupted our study, is there anything else we should do? Well, let your tutor know. Always, always let your tutor know. Building up a rapport and just keeping your tutor in the, in the loop. If anything does happen is, is vital. We might be able to look at extensions, individual support sessions to help you catch up. And if it's something that is, you know, any personal circumstances and you're not sure who to turn to and what to do, just give us a ring. You know, don't leave the, kind of don't put your head in the sand um, because there are ways that we can kind of help you. And the sooner we know that, the better. Great. I think uh, Susan said as well, uh, she agrees with you in saying that, um, you know, sometimes you feel that uh, your tutors are not there to be passive, but actually they really want to hear from you if you need help. And you've got the student support teams as well. So it's really fantastic. Definitely. Good stuff. Excellent. Now, you do have students um, when they're sort of having difficulty sort of thinking about whether study is right for them or maybe starting a module and thinking, actually, is this course right for me? Tell us about how you sort of guide students and, and help them to sort of create a space about thinking about the right solution. Because I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to phone them and they're going to say, yes, continue or, you know, whatever sort of thing. But actually, you, you provide a really lovely service and sort of almost counselling people to making the right decision for them. Definitely. I mean... Our job is to, is to make sure that students are on the right course at the right time, doing the right study intensity, and just making sure that they are, they've got everything that they need to be successful in their studies. If there's, and it's quite, quite common for people midway through their studies to think, actually, is it right for me? And we'd look at, you know, down to the basics, time management, have they got support outside of the university? What's their kind of situation at home like to make sure that they've got the time and resources they need to be able to study successfully? And then we look more into, um, you know, whether or not if, if a student wants to change their studies, what they can do. Are there other qualifications, routes or pathways that would be more, more kind of suitable for them? Um, and you know, we will look at the beginning of the journey and also the end. So what they want to do in their career after they finish their qualification and, and, and what they need to do academically before they go on that next stage of their journey. Yeah. It's a really important point because so many students beginning their sort of qualifications think, yes, I'm aiming for this, and then they'll mm. sort of go through and all of a sudden start thinking, actually, I'm not sure if this is really right for me. Yeah. Um, and we've got the Careers Advisory Service who are brilliant at sort of giving people support longer term. But you're really good, I guess, at sort of talking them through the qualification and looking at the sort of options and ranges of things because there are various different ones, which I guess is why having a subject specialism can be really useful. Definitely. Um, you know, if, we're, if we take law, for example, um, there's different kind of learning outcomes and, um, and the way in which you need to learn how to learn yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah. different kind of uh, subjects and qualifications. And, you know, halfway through or, or at the start, you know, you may find that actually that way of learning isn't right. And so we need to look at other options available and what's going to be right for the, for the student. You're always going to be more successful in your studies if you're doing something that you're passionate and, and love, you know, doing. Yeah. Um, and that includes the kind of what you're working towards and the way in which you work. So we'll look at different qualifications that will suit the student's individual needs and their passions and hopefully tailor-make them up with, uh, with something that they're, they're going to be successful at. 
So I guess students should give you guys a call when they've got a spare moment to really think through their qualification, think through the right sort of options and just make sure that they've got enough there. I mean, at level one, though, you often have a range of options. You know, things start narrowing down the, the further you get through your qualification, don't they? Um, so when might be a good time for students to sort of check in and think about these things in their module? Probably not right now when they're starting. No, no. <laughs> um, I think possibly the best time if they're if they've I mean, give us a call in May, you yeah. know, if they've if they've going near the end of their um, of their module and their studies. Yeah. Um, if it's a 30 credit module, maybe a bit sooner. Yeah. Just give us a call after. Let us know what you felt about it. Let us know, um, you know, what what's going to is, is it going to be similar to other modules yeah. in the future? Because there were certain aspects I don't like. Do you, do you like the group work? Um, did you like the kind of assessment that was being asked of you? What did you think of the kind of questions and how, how you thought the feedback from your tutor, you know, helped you? Yeah. Is it something that you want to kind of work on or is there a change? In, in, in what you want to study. Yeah. All of those questions and, and more, you can just cover through. So have a qualification MOT then around the end yep. of your study when you're sort of starting to work on the next module. But before then, you guys are the people to call. If there's any uncertainty, anything you're not sure about, you triage things for disabled students um, and, and sort of make sure that we've given students the right level of support. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, so I mean, before you start your studies, if there's any kind of, if, if a student has any learning, uh, specific learning difficulty, long-term health or or mental illness at all, um, get in contact with us because we can arrange kind of support. Um, we can look into stuff like the disabled students allowance, yeah. uh, which looks at kind of um, you know anything from human support, travel costs, and uh, you know technical assistance, including training. So um, yeah, I mean, if there's any kind of issue, it's always best to do it the sooner. Uh, the sooner the better, really. Excellent. Well, Zach Eaton, thank you very, very much. Um, I hope you found that useful. I hope it's been um, useful to see how lovely the student support team are and the range of questions that you can go to them with um, and when you might want to go to them as well. So, um, so yeah, thank you for that. HJ, any last minute questions we haven't covered? Uh, I think some maybe some quick ones we can get in. Uh, Sheila's wondering if there's any support at weekends. Yes. So um, I was actually on at the oh, weekend. Of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. hours you work. Good yeah. point, yeah. yeah. So uh, the office is always open eight till eight o'clock in the morning till eight p.m. Uh, at night. Uh, on Saturdays we do nine to five um, as well. So if you have a query on the weekend, don't panic. You can give us a ring on the Saturday. Mm. And there's uh, quite a few people wondering when do they get their tutors. So the tutors are still being allocated. Um, we're kind of the final enrolment date was a couple of days ago now on the 14th so we're just kind of making sure we get all the student numbers in and uh, the allocation some some people might have already got their tutors others it might be another couple of weeks before they they get in contact with them and and, and you know give them a welcome and I think uh, Tanya just as a last one have you got any tips for Tanya who's doing full time yes um, just the time management kind of aspect of it for full-time study is going to be really important. So if you've got a full-time job, 35 to hour, you know, kind of hours per week, make sure you can get at least kind of two to three hours of study per day, or maneuver it around the weekend where you can. Because we'd like to say 18 to 20 hours is the is the recommended, you know, the optimum amount of time to study on a 60 credit module. Often the way the courses are structured means that you've got similar sort of deadlines as well yes. for the, the TMAs, the tutor marked assignments. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's really important to sort of make sure you're on top of your study planner. 100%, yeah, mm. definitely. Yeah, excellent. Lovely. Well, thank you very much, Zach, for My covering pleasure. all of that with us, and I hope that's been a good introduction. Um, we're going to uh, show you a little video now of the campus tour, so it just gives you a sense of what's outside the studio. Um, so I talked to Dan Weinbrin about uh, a book he's written, which is The History of the OU, um, and then I'm joined by Mark Nichols, and we're going to talk about getting your computer and your space all set up for study. So join me in a couple of minutes for that.